Welcome to Xavier's School of Applied Logistics. Today we're going to be looking at making cargo rockets in the Factorio mod Space Exploration. Here's our agenda for the day. We'll start with a single item rocket. We will then send multiple items in the same rocket. And then we'll finish with one big over-engineered system at the end to address some of the issues with the multi-item rocket. For our single item rocket, we're going to be sending rocket fuel, rocket parts, space capsule, and the item we need to load. So our logic for this is we need to load 100 rocket parts, we need to load a single control unit, and then we need to launch the rocket when it is full of the item. Now some potential issues we can run into with this is a rocket part shortage, so if we don't have enough rocket parts, the cargo hold is going to fill up with all the item that we're loading and it's not going to leave any space for those rocket parts when they finally do ar arrive. So it's going to deadlock the system. To fix this, you can not start loading until the rocket is complete. The rocket silo emits a signal that tells you when it has all the rocket parts and so you can set your inserters up to be disabled until they receive that signal. That's not particularly optimal for throughput though. We really only need to leave a couple of empty squares for those cargo rocket pieces. So we're going to emit a fake complete signal so long as there are a couple of empty squares. Let's jump into game and have a look at it. On the left side, we've set up our inserters with conditions to only be enabled when the rocket silo isn't full of the thing we need. So there's the space capsules. Here we have our cargo rocket sections. We request packed rocket sections. In general, you don't want to leave individual rocket parts in your logistics network. They take up too much space. So we always unpack them and pack them when needed. On the right here, our inserters are set to only run when our cargo rocket signal is present. This means that the rocket is built. So it currently is, as you can see. This decider is where we fake the completion if there are empty squares, the silo emits the number of empty squares as the E signal. So here we just say, so long as it's greater than an arbitrary low number, then pretend that the cargo rocket is complete. So you can see on the right there, there are currently 500 empty signals. If we put some stuff in here, fill up four of the slots, there are now 496. Now for sending multiple items in the same cargo hold. So our logic here, we're going to set it up very similar to how the logistics train network mod works. So we use a constant combinator to set the target amount of the item we want at the destination. We're going to specify using a negative number, that's just to match with LTN. Then we combine that number with the items in the cargo hold and also the items in the remote logistics network. And if it's less than our threshold, then that's the item we need to load. We'll set our inserter filter to filter items as needed. And then we're going to launch when there is nothing left to load. So this example here only has a single filter inserter. You can imagine having multiple ones if you wanted to increase throughput. Here is what this looks like in game. So we have our constant combinator up here, outputting a request for express belt and rails. Note the negative number. So we want 500 of each. Again, that's just to match how LTN does it. We then add a large arbitrary number to that amount. This is because we need to filter our receiving signal. So down here, usually you'd just be sending your logistics network straight through the signal transmitter into the receiver, but here I'm using a constant combinator to make it a bit easier. So we've got these, we've got 200 blue and 300 rail in our destination, uh, in our destination logistics network. We've also got 45 electric poles, which we don't care about for the purpose of this. So if we want 500 of each, then we need 300 more blue and 200 more rail. But uh, we need to filter out this big electric pole because it'll mess with things. So to do that, we take our request, we add a large number to it, we then take that large number, so these output symbols, 1 million of each, we then add in what we're getting from the signal receiver and also what's currently in the cargo hold. That gives us large numbers for the things that we requested and small numbers for everything else. We then subtract that number that we added in the start and if you look at the output signals, you can see we've filtered it down to just what we've requested. And these are the total amount in the destination and also in the cargo hold minus what we're requesting. So as long as this is negative, it means we still need more of them. Multiply by negative one to get a positive number and then feed that into an inserter 
filter, sorry, a filter inserter with set filters as the circuit connection. And you can see here that it's set its filters to belt and rail. Now, if we say that we've got a heap of rail already in the destination network, you can see now that it's more than 500, so it takes it out of the filter and it doesn't need it anymore. When it's all filled up, so let's just add a heap of blue belt in there. So now this rocket is ready to go. There's no filters left here. So the way we do that is we take a decider combinator. We say, so long as everything is less than or equal to zero, so that's what's coming out of here. You can see our output signals are both negative, then output our green signal, and then we can set the rocket to launch on, uh, launch on green signal, signal when fuel full. So potential issues we run into with this solution, there's a gap when the rocket launches. So this can send up to double the amount specified of the items that we're looking for. A loss of power can cause overfilling and a shortage of one item denies the entire load. So let's look at those top two issues a little bit more. So fixing our rocket launch delay, this isn't actually particularly feasible. So the rocket might not ever arrive at the destination, the rocket might crash. The system works by relying on knowing how many of each item exist in the destination logistics network. So there's a gap after send, but before receive where the items don't exist anywhere. And then if the rocket crashes, then there's gonna be a further delay until those items can get picked up by the construction robots. So we effectively need to wait until the items have been received in the destination. But if we launch a rocket and it crashes, when do we know that we have an accurate count from the destination network? It's a very hard problem to solve in general. So usually I just make sure I have enough capacity at the destination for double whatever amount that I'm sending. Brownouts can wreak havoc on this system. Uh, you will have issues playing this mod, or certainly if you play it like I do. And typically you get brownouts rather than blackouts, so you get flapping power. This causes all sorts of havoc on your circuitry, and in particular the senders and receivers stop working reliably. We need to be able to tell the difference between no items at the destination, fill the rocket, and power is out, don't fill the rocket. And in general that's quite difficult to do. And particularly if you're dealing with flapping power, uh, I recommend just tripping a circuit breaker and manually re-enabling the whole system once power issues are fixed uh, because you'll sort of get all sorts of half inserters working and whatnot that gets very messy. So the fix that we use for this is we use a liveness signal. So we send a synthetic signal from the destination back to the source. I usually use one black signal. Then we add negative one of that black signal from a constant combinator on the receiver. So when the power is good, the one and the negative one cancel each other out and there's no signal and we can ignore it. When the power is bad, we get a negative signal, and using that negative signal, we can pretend that the destination is full of all items and we can prevent loading. I then typically latch that negative signal so that it will stay negative until manually reset. And you can also hook that up to an alarm or something to make sure that you know about it. So to put that all together, we get this complicated looking monstrosity and rather than jump into game to show you how it works, I'm going to jump over to a handy diagram I made. So here's our diagram. There are really three sections to it. The first over here is remote empty. This is, you've already seen this. This is pretty much the same thing we used in the previous multi-item setup. Uh, it's got the whole filtering uh, and that set up. For loading, it's also pretty much the same, it's very similar. Um, the bit that's new, there are two bits that are new. One is this is how brownout protection works. So we start with, we need remote and requested as our inputs. Remote coming from the remote logistics network, requested coming from our constant combinator. So we start with, this is our latch system, these top two here. So this is a, this is going to look weird if you haven't seen it before, but this particular setup means that if black is greater than blue, output black, it loops back into itself. So pretty much if this goes negative, uh, it will stay negative until you toggle this combinator here off and on again. So we feed that in all the way down here and pretty much we use the requested items uh, that come in here. We multiply them by negative a thousand to make them really big um, and then we multiply them out and by the black signal. So remember the black signal is usually zero. So it, 
So in normal operation, this isn't going to output anything, but as soon as our black signal goes negative, we then convert it over to positive, we multiply it out, we multiply all the items we've requested, and it basically means that we get a large number for all of the items that we've requested, and we can feed them via this red signal into our loading circuit block. The second new thing in this setup is our launch criteria. So our launch criteria use a similar setup to what, to what I use for spaceships, if you've seen my previous tutorial, where there are really three launch conditions. Each launch condition emits a yellow signal, and then over here, if we have three yellow signals, so all criteria are, meet, are met, we launch the rocket. So our first launch criteria is we are not in a brownout. So our black signal is not negative. Our second launch criteria is the same criteria we used for the previous setup, where if we're full of all the items, then we launch. Then our third criteria is we only want to launch the rocket if we're actually running low of anything. So that's what this final criteria here does. And so you wire that all up very carefully. Uh, actually, there's a extra thing here where in order to buffer signals so we don't get any back propagation, uh, we just take the remote signal and put it into a combinator that doesn't do anything, but now it gives us three outputs here that won't combine with one another, so you don't get signals crossing over where you don't want them. That's my Cargo Rocket tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments.